Hi, Mikey Stafford here from Sports Show, and I'm with Kieran Murphy of Second Captains and um, Murph, who has a you have a new Second Captains annual out at the moment, have you? Yeah, we do indeed. Um, should be in shops by the end of this week, but you can pre-order them online right now at secondcaptains.com, and it's free shipping for Ireland and the UK. So um, why bother going into the shop? Quite frankly, Mikey, we can deliver it straight to your door. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's good stuff. Anyone who bought it last year knows the knows the crack. So hopefully we'll. We'll ha- we'll uh, get a few more repeat customers. That's some great a shilling there. So um, <laughs> now that Murph's got that out of the way, he's here to uh, explain to us how the All Star selection works. Uh, Murph was for a couple of years in a previous mm. existence on the uh, much fated, mysterious, yes, Opus uh, Day like um, <laughs> All Star Football Selection Committee. So Murph, first of all, tell us how each year it starts. I guess you just pick a few lads from Milltown few lads yeah. you've been drunk with in uh, coppers and then anyone will answer a phone for an interview and put them down as your nominations yeah yeah and you kind of get to 45 nominations pretty quickly that way i found uh yeah no it's 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 a it's a strange one because it is actually like it's a big deal for people not just the players but i mean like for fans and everyone like that it, there, there's a certain cachet that goes with it that i didn't really think about for well, us it's cachet but for you then it's pressure yeah well there's a bit of well there's a bit of pressure like to be honest you go to games, I went, obviously we would have done probably, I don't know, 16 or 17 live games those years, maybe even more. And uh, you do kind of have it in the back of your head that if there's a guy who's uh, shooting the lights out or performing well. I remember sitting in Crow Park one day and the leash goalkeeper was performing heroics. And I met a, like a very definitive mental note. It's like this guy, not alone is this guy, you know, putting his name forward for an All-Star, but when I suggest his name at the All-Stars meeting, people will nod in appreciation that, you know, my, I, I'm screwed on here. I'm not just selecting the three, last three goalkeepers left in the championship. So there is, you, there is a bit of pressure on. Uh, you do have it very much uh, in, to the front of your mind uh, while you're reporting on things. But there's, you also realise that there's massive limitations to what you can bring as one member mm. of an all-star committee. There's a, a group of journalists there who've been doing it for years and years and years. And obviously there's... There's like a core group of guys who make the decisions, you know? The so, Illuminati. Yeah, well, yeah, something like that, you know? Uh, so, like, those guys make all the decisions, and you're there to, you know, kind of add your expertise at vital moments when, uh, you know, suggesting a leash goalkeeper, you know, is, there's, there's like kind of a hipster vibe to the, to the whole thing, you know? So, no, it is. It, like, it's interesting. And Tell us how, the, how these meetings work then, you know? You all have sent in your nominations, some after the league, and then... A final list is it after the championship? Yeah, well, the year we we did it, it was it was after the championship. So you sat down and you came up with uh, a list of names that you felt right. Here's my forty five nom- nominations. You go into a meeting, very quickly you get to like eight forwards, nine forwards, where there's almost unanimity, and then you sit down and you debate over the you know the the, the last few. You know, so if, if there's eighteen backs and eighteen forwards, maybe you reach fifteen very quickly. And then there's, you know, the last three or four, you you kind of, uh, you sit down and have a discussion about it. I mean, the, and then from there, you, okay, so the nominations are announced, and then you sit down and pick the team. And again, the team is, like, it's not that scientific a, a, a thing, because if I sat down and you sat down after a summer of watching the games, as we both did, we'd probably come up with, what, 12 footballers, 13 hurlers, and then after that, really, it's just a case of having it out, you know. This is what um, we want to hear about the having it out. How does that work? Yeah. So do the old do the old timers guys who've been on the panel for twenty years? They just pull rank and tell you to no, shut up. No, not not really. No, I, I like. I know that's what you want to hear, Mikey. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it's quite obvious that's what you want to hear. But it's not. You were beaten, weren't you, Mark? You were no, beaten. No, no, I, I I remember with pride getting one man on on the team in uh, twenty twelve. Me and a you know a, a cabal of others. Because um, actually, I, I looked at the two teams and I was like, trying to jog my memory. It's like, does, there, uh, does anything stand out from the selection process here? Um, you know that 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 I could tell you about. And really, like, it's not that there is massive rise because there are massive rise. There are massive rise, but not necessarily about a certain player. Because in the end, it all kind of comes out in the wash. Guys will come out and they'll say, right, well, he was marking this guy who we've already put on the All-Star team. Like, there is that level of detail that does mm. go into it so that, you know, if he was, if, uh, you know, um, Andy Moran was on Marc O'Shea, say, for instance, and we've given Marc O'Shea an All-Star, and Andy Moran kicked three points off 
mm. of uh, Mark O'Shea while he was marking. That's taken into account in a you know in a very real sense. So there is plenty of detail floating around. I remember one year, the, the year of 2012, Mark McHugh had revolutionised football and it was like, how do you solve Mark McHugh? This was the, the question that everyone was asking in the Gaelic football world. And like, where do you, where do you play him on a team? Like he played literally everywhere. He yeah. was a sweeper, he wore number 12. In the end, he won the Ulster at number 12. But I do remember there being like a fevered debate like why are we picking all these Donegal backs <laughs> because they, you know like they, they all have so much help yeah. you know like how can you choose one Donegal back over another how can you say that they're defending like they defend they're, they, they're brilliant defensively as a mm. team not as individuals so you're kind of sitting down trying to think right okay w- w- should we just name the best 15 players and just throw them up in a heap and I think that and you know just give assign them numbers and mm. let that be that I think there's probably a lot to be said for doing that, to be honest. And I think that that's how, that's how it works out. I mean, uh, I know you guys had Ken McGrath on the, the GAR, and he was saying that he, in his book you know, that he won an All-Star for nine minutes playing at midfield. But like, Ken McGrath deserved an All-Star. Yes. And he won an All-Star. So why, why overthink it? You know? You'd be a bit hamstrung if you stick to the positions, yeah. particularly when managers don't care as much about yeah, positions exactly. anymore. So Billy really, McMahon's not a cornerback in the classic yeah. sense of a cornerback. Yeah, so really what you end up with is... Um, you know, three full backs, three full forwards, and everyone else just go where you like. You know, it's like literally the the junior B solution. I've got 15 jerseys here. Just put on any number you like. Just go out and play, you know. Do you miss it, Murph? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, I, no. I would, I, it would be a lie to say that I, that, that I miss it. Uh, it was fun, though, you know. And, like, there's a certain subset, as I said, of people out there who think it's a massive honour that, you know, the, like it would be should be the first line of my my obituary, you know. So um, yeah, no, it's no, it's fine. I, I'm happy to let other people take the flag. On Friday, play. when the team is named and they're raging about it, they'll be a little bit better informed on how that terrible, terrible selection was put together. Yeah, and and they know about the second captain's annual sports annual volume two uh, available now uh, to pre-order on secondcaptains.com. On that, on that greasy, <laughs> greasy note, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much, Murph. Thanks. Mike. <laughs>